So, previously I made a video showing the uh, the effects of the extremely high rear camber link and the extremely low uh, rear camber link and how it affected roll left and right um, with lateral forces. Uh, you can look at that video, I'm not going to go into that this time. Suffice to say the side with the higher um, link had a lower roll center and rolled significantly more when a lateral force is applied to that side of the car. So, a lot of people wonder why does that actually happen. It looks like it would be the opposite thing. They look at this link and they're like, well, you know, the car chassis, the, the inner brace, has way more leverage on this side. And it's actually mounted under the brace here to make the uh, situation very extreme so it shows up on video. Well, that's not thinking of the forces correctly. Um, when the car rolls, uh, when that shock tower wants to... Uh, push down as the car rolls uh, and that camber link wants to push outward, you have to remember that what is stopping the roll there is the spring on the uh, shock between the arm and the tower there, that hinge point at the hinge pin. So what is not obvious that is happening is that there is a very significant downward force and lateral force being placed on this tire. So what happens is there's a uh, hinge pin there at the bottom of the hub. I mean, we all know it's there. I can't get it on video really well. And the point is, is that when you're in a corner and your car wants to go this way because you're turning this way and, you know, um, force is pushing it this way, this tire is going to go like this on the bottom hinge pin. And it's going to actually take this link and pull against the chassis. This is the opposite of how people think of it. People think of it as, oh, well, I'm having the car push against the tire. Well, in reality, pushing against the tire, it already wants to go that way, and it's already trying to go that way because of the forces applied on the track. And this is why I keep telling people, you're thinking of the forces wrong. You have to think of it in the context of the tire and its lateral force and its downward force and how that's going to affect it. And to prove how this happens, so we've got this arbor plate there, just the corner holding the tire, just as if there's an extreme amount of traction there, like, you know, as good a traction situation as you can possibly have. So... What I'm going to do is just pop off this link, which is raised up extremely high, pop it off, there we go, and we're going to sit it there. Now watch what happens as we push the car this direction. That tire wants to roll over. If it had been connected here to this camber link position, that force would have pulled the car and motivated it to roll. Because this side is higher, it's got more lever arm against the fulcrum of the, uh, of the uh, hinge pin here. Since this side is lower, while the car may have more leverage on the wheel moving, the wheel has far less leverage to pull the chassis. This is why when you look at chassis roll, there's a whole bunch of different intersecting lines and it creates a virtual point around which the car's weight rolls. It's not as simple as just looking, oh, there's a lot of leverage here because I'm pushing against the tire. In reality, <laughs> pushing this direction, that tire wants to go that way already. It's this guy that's pulling the chassis this direction. And that is why uh, it ends up working the way that it does. It's very counterintuitive, but hopefully this demonstrates why the uh, upper link produces. Um, the upper mounting position here that I've got this gigantic shim produces more chassis roll than that previous video.